how did you get selected for the remote viewing program? I had found out that Army Intelligence, where I was working, had this had these psychics, remote viewers. I didn't know it, so I asked to meet General Stumblebine to see if I really wanted to go to the job. In January 1986, I got approached by by the people at Fort Meade to they sent someone down to interview me for the job and it took six months to get from Army Intelligence to the Defense Intelligence Agency to work as a remote viewer. We were doing hostages and we were running the information from Fort Meade to Bowling Air Force Base. So whatever hostages I was working, they were running the information up and the people were taking the information and giving it to the Israeli embassy and the Israelis were acting on the information. Now we got a call on Sunday and they said that there was a, a Marine, Rich Higgins. He was a Marine Colonel. He went to Lebanon and he was kidnapped. And they asked if we could find him and they were very concerned because he was military and they were afraid he was going to be killed. But they did not know where he was. So I went to a piece of imagery and I said, he's right there. And I pointed to where Higgins was. The military people in the office said, well, there's nothing there. It's, it's, it's all woods. Why would he be there? Sometimes they let hostages go. Mm -hmm. So there was a hostage that was let go by Hezbollah, and it was a Ger it was a German guy, Cordes. So our analyst went over to Rhein-Main in Germany to debrief him, and our analyst asked, "Do you know where Higgins is?" And Cordes, the released hostage, said, "He's right there." He pointed to where I where I had pointed to. Wow. And the analyst looked at him and said, but there's nothing there but woods. And Cordes said, no, they built a structure there to put Higgins in. And that's where he was. A group claiming to be holding U.S. Marine Lieutenant Colonel William Higgins has warned it will hang the American soldier at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, Eastern Time, unless Israel frees a pro-Iranian fundamentalist cleric. Remember the Gaddafi was supposed to have had a chemical plant that nobody could find or they said they knew where it was but they didn't know how the chemicals were getting there or every time they would go they could never find the chemicals. So they asked me, you know, they said, what's going on? So I said they were bringing it in. I, I, I named this vessel and I called it potato and I spelled it like potato. So we wrote a report up and we brought it to the, it was brought to the analyst and Dr. Verona saw the report sitting on the analyst's desk and he says, does this mean anything to you? And the uh, analyst said, well, the vessel's not potato, it's batado, it's a B instead of a P. Dr. Verona went to the, the commander of the DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency, and they, they called Turkey and they pulled up a submarine to watch that vessel. The vessel sailed the route that I said it was going to sail. They said it probably it probably did have the chemicals on board or it was probably the way they were getting in, in and out. But it wasn't it wasn't highly successful or successful. It was highly probable. There was a TV program, The Ten Most Wanted, and there was a man named Charles Jordan. He was on the 10 most wanted list. He was a customs agent that went rogue. So customs called in Dr. Verona and said, we're looking for this guy. I went into session with Fern and all he did is he asked me, where was Charles Jordan? And it came out, I said, Laval, Wyoming. And it came out like that. It just came out. And Fern said, well, I, I was born in Lowell, Massachusetts. Are, are you sure you mean Wyoming, and I said yes, because I had the feeling of the West, you know, the Wild West, that whole feeling came over me, and I said, no, it's Wyoming. And he said, well, there's a level Wyoming, not Lowell, so I spelled it L-O-W-E-L-L, -L, but it was really L-O-V-E-L-L, -L. and I said, well, that's close enough. Nobody believed me what I said, and then they found him, and when they did the reenactment in 1995, 
the custom, we said, oh, it's too bad we didn't get credit for, you know, for finding the guy. They said, oh no, it was because of my information. They said he sent his mother a picture of himself to show her that he was healthy and that he was okay. And when they saw the pictures, they saw the Wyoming license plate. And so they knew I was right. And then they started looking up in Wyoming and a security guard at Yellowstone saw him, but they said, no, it was because of me. It, it turned the whole search around. Wow. And they found him. Wow. All humans have this at one point in time. Do you? What is? I mean. Oh, I think it's. I think it's always been there. Psychically, we know when to be born. I believe psychically, we know when to leave too. I think we all have it. It's just. It, it's just not accepted in our culture. Why do you think we've lost it, though? I think a lot of it had to do with the church back a long, long time ago. Whenever the Christianity came about in Constantinople. And he, you know, he wasn't only an, uh, an emperor or a ruler, he was also wanted to be a religious leader. So I think he took a lot of things out of the church. That's why you have groups like the Masons and you have these secret societies. I mean, I think these people have know this stuff, but it's just not talked about.